So by now, I am sure you have seen this guy all over the internet. Kale is bullshit. So an animal-based diet is, succinctly put, Oregon's meat, fruit, honey, raw dairy. I'm gonna show you guys how I poop. So Dr. Paul Saladino has gained millions of followers through his controversial and somewhat extreme views on food and other lifestyle choices. His diet is pretty restrictive, to put it mildly. He follows an animal-based diet, which equates to essentially only eating meat, fruit, honey, raw milk, ghee, butter, and kefir. No, not that kefir. I see you with kefir. I don't care about kefir. And he has really been the pioneer of demonizing seed oils. I'm sure you have noticed all of your favorite fitness influencers are avoiding seed oils like the plague. Well, you've got this guy to thank for it. These seed oils were originally created as machine lubricants and they should have stayed that way. Get them out of your diet full stop. Corn, canola, soybean, safflower, sunflower, Grape seed, etc. Garbage. Now he has faced a lot of criticism from people who say he is a fear mongerer and an extremist, and I don't even disagree with that really. But I think what we're seeing and why he has gained so much popularity, even with myself, someone that tunes into a lot of what he says, is just because people are so sick of eating and feeling like crap. And I'm sure we've seen that viral tweet that went out and said, society has gotten so used to junk food that now eating real food is considered dieting. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I think he is over the top. Eggs are the best shampoo. You guys might think I'm crazy, but check this out. Eggs contain many nutrients in the white and the yolk. I agree that his overall messaging of eating real foods, minimizing processed foods, is for the best for most people. But for me, it's a little too rigid, too all or nothing for my liking. And I think for a lot of us that are watching this video right now that work the normal style jobs, that have families to look after and just want to be healthy for them and set a good example, but also want to live our normal lives, I think the answer is somewhere in the middle, like most things. So I want to show you in this video how I incorporate the framework of this diet, but still make it my own so it's sustainable and fits within my lifestyle. Now, the first rule that I break is artificial sweeteners. I'm just not willing to give them up, and I'm surely not willing to give up my morning routine where I think this is one of the most important things I do on a daily basis. So this might trigger a lot of people, but I personally do not think there is anything wrong with artificial sweeteners in small quantities. And this is actually the first thing I put in my body every single day. So as soon as I wake up, 4 a.m., I grab my cup, I smash my pre-workout cocktail, which is no caffeine, but it does have the greens and superfoods, the reds and blues, creatine, and electrolytes. I might even put a little extra salt in here. You guys know you can use code Travis on PEScience.com to save 10% on anything that they have. But in my opinion, this is the perfect way to start my day because it will give me all the micronutrients that I need. It helps wake me up naturally. And ultimately, it makes me feel so good that I'll never be convinced it's bad. Now, ultimately, I don't think anything I just showed you is going to cause any harm to my body, but people are going to take issue with it, and that is perfectly okay. That's what I love about living in this country. We can all have our own opinions. But as we move into breakfast, even the animal-based diet purists are going to love what I have, which is essentially my first real meal of the day. All right, breakfast of champions here. We are going to start with three whole eggs. And then we're just gonna mix these up with some ground beef. You have to have it already prepped or this is never gonna work unless you're like a social media influencer full time. But usually people have a lot going on specifically in the morning. So I'm gonna whip all of that up. So we start the day off pretty strong and I think I'd even make Dr. Saladino proud with that. And as we move through the morning, I don't have any cravings, I'm full. That's a perfect breakfast for me. It's just something that works extremely well and it doesn't take a lot of time. So it really checks off all my boxes. And then we move into lunch where I do pretty much everything flawlessly except one very controversial 
food group, vegetables. You sometimes ask me which vegetables are okay to eat. My answer is no. Why would you eat plant leaves and stems and roots and seeds? These are the most highly defended parts of plants. They put defense chemicals in those parts of plants. Things like oxalates, lectins, saponins, digestive enzyme inhibitors like tannins. These are gonna mess up your digestion and your hormones, generally make you feel horrible, and they're gonna make you fart a lot too. Now, I can't even pronounce the words that this guy is talking about, and he is smarter than I will ever be. He makes a compelling argument for everything he says. A guy could do very well in, in my industry in sales. But there's just something about giving up vegetables that I can't imagine is necessary for the majority of people. So lunch is essentially the same thing every single day. They say variety is the spice of life, but uh, that is not me at all. I love eating the same things over and over, really doing a lot of the same things over and over, but it's typically just gonna be ground beef with any vegetable of my choice. So today is corn, might be broccoli, asparagus, really whatever we have in the house. And I know a lot of people that follow an animal-based diet truthfully think that vegetables are a bad thing. And, it's just not something I can truthfully get on board with. I just can't be convinced that vegetables are bad for you or have that many negative consequences. So I'm gonna to continue to keep them in my diet and then for dessert every day. One of my favorite foods of all time is just pineapple. Absolutely love it. So this meal has a lot of fat, a lot of protein. I should say moderate fat, but a lot of protein. Tastes delicious, keeps me satiated, and doesn't make me feel lethargic in the middle of the day, which is most important. So we've broken a few rules, but overall, I would say we're still in pretty good graces of the animal-based gods. And as we move into the afternoon, I'm typically craving a little bit of a snack. Now, thankfully, we don't keep the normal snack foods in the house. We don't have Oreos or chips or anything like that. So it becomes a pretty easy decision of what I will have. snacking goes nothing too exciting it's almost always a bowl of fruit specifically strawberries and blueberries and I don't know if it's the micronutrients or the way it rehydrates you or what but when I eat fruit I feel like a million bucks and I truly do love it I think it's delicious I don't see one downside to eating fruit some people might say it's a little bit expensive but when you think about it the most expensive thing you can do is be unhealthy so i would rather invest my money into high quality foods than a lot of the other luxury items that most people will waste their money on inevitably so we make it to this point and it hasn't been perfect but i think anybody objectively grading my animal-based diet will give me a minus b plus i think um but dinner is really the wild card so I've got a family, I've got a lot of things going on. I travel for work, we go out with customers, I go out with coworkers. So could I stick to just meat and fruit? Yes, I could, but that is not really going to fit in what I want out of my lifestyle. So maybe it's Friday night sushi, or maybe Megan makes her famous chili over the weekend. Or sometimes, you know, it truly is, you know, bacon and eggs and other animal-based foods. Sometimes it's salmon and vegetables. It could be anything that we like to eat as a family, but it might break protocol a little bit. And you know, I think that is perfectly okay. Again, you could stick to that way of eating if you like, but for us, it just doesn't really make sense. And you gotta think, if you wanna stick to the animal-based diet explicitly, you gotta give up Chick-fil-A, and who wants to do that? Chick-fil-A cooks their breaded chicken sandwich in peanut oil, the grill has canola oil on it, and their kale crunch salad has soybean oil. They're clearly proud of the fact they use seed oils, like peanut oil in their stuff. They're so backwards in their thinking. Now, some of you could say that I just lack self-discipline and that definitely has something to do with it. There are just certain foods I am not willing to give up 
Something as simple as a protein shake that is just so convenient in my life when I'm running around like a madman chasing around a little 10 month old. It's just an easy way for me to get protein, especially when I didn't prepare ahead far enough, which is on me, I get, but this has just been the way where I can still continue to eat the right foods the majority of the time and still have a lot of the foods that I love and enjoy. And this has probably been my favorite diet I have ever followed. One, because it's not so rigid that it makes it super inconvenient for me to follow. Typically, everyone throughout the day does their own thing and at night has some kind of gathering. So ultimately, this has been great for me. But of course, if you do know me at night, I have a sweet tooth. So I also have to make a few concessions there. So as you get into the end of the night, sticking to a strict animal-based diet can be very challenging because usually you're wanting something sweet if you're anything like me. So this is where I'll kind of stray from what the textbook definition of an animal-based diet is, but still making very conscious decisions and choosing the lesser of the evils. And sometimes, you know, I'll just do honey, which of course is great, but when I still need something that's a little bit more substantive, my first choice is gonna be this protein bar by P Science. This is their Select Go bar. My preferred flavor is the chocolate chip cookie dough. I'm truly not a fan of the other flavors. So this is a very unique protein bar because when you look at the ingredients on the screen, they're probably the best ingredients I've ever seen on a protein bar. So a lot of times people try this for the first time and they're almost taken back a little bit because it doesn't taste like artificial sweeteners and it's like, you know, that fake taste that most protein bars have tastes very natural, has great ingredients, and I think it's delicious. So I'll even break this open for you guys. Just like that right there. And to me, this is perfect, especially when I'm traveling. Sometimes I'll be in a pinch and I'll just have to have this for lunch, but still, I enjoy it every single time. I eat one or two of these per day. I try to only eat one of these per day. Sometimes it ends up being two, but regardless of what diet you're on, Highly recommend these. Now another option could be these That's It Organic Dark Chocolate Fig Truffles. Surprisingly, they are delicious. The downside to this is they only sell them at Costco, I believe, which I hate Costco. So the ingredients of these are just organic figs, organic dark chocolate, organic unsweetened chocolate, organic sugar, organic chocolate cocoa butter. You can see the macros on the screen for three which I think is great. It really does help curb your sweet tooth. Absolutely love these things. Again, not really gonna fall into the strict animal-based diet, but it's much better than a candy bar. And actually, another product that That's It has are these fruit bars, and these really do, it's just fruit. So this bar right here is just apples and strawberries, and I absolutely love these things. So great company, that's it. If you ever wanna sponsor a video, let me know. You know, I'm so jealous of all the people with their camera crews and official setups, and I'm over here pretty much with a big glow stick because the lights and the sauna are out, but ultimately what I can tell you is this has been my favorite eating protocol that I have ever followed. If you've been on the channel long enough, you know I have done everything from extreme bro 24 seven, just eating chicken broccoli rice, to the other end of the spectrum where I'm going a little overboard on the if it fits your macros and making all of these crazy foods, spending all my free time in the kitchen to see how creative I could get, uh, which I really didn't enjoy all that much. Now, this is something I feel has a lot of benefits in that I'm eating more whole natural foods than I'm used to, and I think the foods that you really should be eating primarily, but it's still giving me the flexibility to fit within my lifestyle. So whichever protocol you decide to pick, I believe it should just be made up primarily of real foods and then fitting in all of the other foods that you enjoy throughout your life. But the most important is something that you can adhere to. As much as I like Paul's content, I do think it's too rigid and too extreme for the normal person like myself. But please let me know what you all think in the comments down below. And also let me know if you think I should try out carnivore for a month. I've been quite interested in that. So I appreciate you being here and I'll talk to y'all next time.